Hello, you absolute legends. If you've watched a lot of Doom speedrunning, you'll know that it is incredibly action-packed. Players fly through these levels even when coming face to face with what seems to be inescapable death. Doom speedruns are played on the hardest difficulties, and because of this, the levels are flooded with monsters. Completing levels under these conditions is hard enough as it is, but today we will look at the hardest challenge of them all. Today we will look at the category speedrunners call Pacifist. The rule is simple, you may not shoot in any way that can directly injure any monsters. Generally, playing as a pacifist makes the speedrun much more difficult and results in slower times. Sometimes it has no impact whatsoever and the record for normal and pacifist play are identical. We've already seen this a couple of times in previous videos. When 4 Shock Blast achieved 8 seconds on Hangar, this was a pacifist run as well. He did fire a single bullet at the very beginning, which alerted some of the mobs putting them in a better position, but as he did not directly injure any mobs, this did not break the golden rule. The Chasm record that we explored previously was also a pacifist run. Doom players have been competing in this category since the 90s, and most of the levels were completed in those early years. There are some exceptions though. For example in Doom 2, it took until 2011 for someone to finish map 17, Tenements, and the resulting run took over 40 minutes to complete. By 2017, all but two levels in Doom 2 had been conquered. Level 2, The Underhauls, and Level 30, Icon of Sin, the final level. It's understandable that level 30 had stood unbeaten for so long, as the condition to beat the level is to destroy the demon boss by firing a weapon into its exposed brain. It may be theoretically possible to beat without firing a weapon, however the strategy required to do so is so unfathomably difficult to execute and it may never happen. I will explain this theoretical strategy later in the video. Level 2 on the other hand has no such roadblock. It's a standard level like any other. You simply need to reach the end and activate the exit switch. The problem is that the level is packed to the brim with shotgunners and zombie men. These are enemies with weapons that utilize hitscan, making it much more difficult to avoid taking damage. The tight corridors and lack of room to maneuver only serve to make this challenge even more insurmountable. But surmounted it was. On the 7th of September 2017, the Doom Specialist Zero Master beat Underhauls for the first time in 23 years under the pacifist rules. The run itself is pretty amazing, and today we will uncover how this incredibly difficult challenge was finally completed. I hope you enjoy. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by the legends at NordVPN. Now if you don't know the drill by now, you must be living under a rock. I shouldn't need to explain to you what a VPN is. I assume that if you watch my channel, you are a civilized, tech-savvy individual who knows their way around a computer and the internet. But a VPN is essential to keeping your privacy intact when browsing online. Now, this is happening all over the world, but in Australia, we're getting owned by government regulations preventing access to specific websites. And also for some reason, content creators, YouTube channels, etc. love to block content here. I have no idea what that is. In any case, I use NordVPN to access and watch whatever I want. And you should be doing the same. This isn't rocket science. NordVPN is extremely easy to use. You can connect and disconnect seamlessly with a single click. This will not break your bank either. If you use my link, you'll get 70% off and two months free. There is also a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is absolutely no risk to trying it out. Go to the description, click on the link, and give it a go. And a huge thanks to NordVPN for supporting this channel. During this explanation, I'll be using footage from both the first person perspective of Zero Master as he completes the run, and also from the third person perspective, but I'll put a link to Zero Master's full run in the description. The very beginning of the run is relatively simple. He needs to activate the switch to lower the wall, granting access to the next section. There is a medikit conveniently located here as well to offset some of the damage caused by the zombie men. The normal way to progress from here would be to collect the red keycard. This is used to gain access to a switch that lowers the walls, allowing you to progress to the next stage of the level. But you can actually get past the barrier without the wall being lowered because the gap is the exact same width as Doomguy. The gap is 32 units wide, which is the diameter of the player. Though getting through isn't so simple, as the movement mechanics in Doom are ever so imprecise. Even if you are only pressing forward, there is always a minute amount of error in the movement calculation that moves you to the left or right. It is this imprecision that makes it seemingly impossible to squeeze through the gap, even though the width is definitely large enough to let us pass through, in theory. Obviously, we can and do pass through, 
It's just a little bit more complicated to perform. This is called a squeeze glide, and it takes some practice to perform with any semblance of pace. Performing the glide while monsters are shooting at you requires a fair amount of luck, as each shot will provide enough knockback to force you to have to start the process of setting up the trick again from scratch. Once through the gap, Zero Master comes face to face with a room full of shotgunners. These guys can take off up to 45% of your health in a single blast. Dropping down the hole doesn't make matters much better either. There is no room to move at all, essentially making Doomguy a fish in a barrel. This seems like a no-win situation, but thankfully there are plenty of barrels around for mobs to blow up and kill themselves with. Being able to outlive the monsters with all of this explosive carnage happening is extremely rare and something that takes a lot of tries to successfully get through. When the dust settles, two imps remain intact. Now Zero Master performs some maneuvering to make one imp kill the other. Once only one imp remains, we need to find a way to remove him from the equation in preparation for the next challenge. This can be done by causing the imp to get stuck on the blue keycard door. Zero Master first lures him into the far corner and then runs to the opposite side of the door. The path finding of the imp brings it up against the door frame which blocks its path. Due to an oddity in the imp's programming, it believes the door frame is actually part of the door itself and is something the imp can open. So instead of moving around the door frame, which is what it would do if it were any other wall or object in its way, it continuously attempts to open the door until the barrier is removed. Only, that never happens for obvious reasons. Now Zero Master wants to eliminate as many monsters that remain on the top level as possible. He pushes himself up against the corner below the hole and lies in wait. In this position, the mobs above will try to shoot him, but due to the angle will never be able to connect any shots. When a monster strays into enemy fire, it will spark a civil war that will leave only one enemy standing at the end. After some time, he begins the task of clearing the room that houses the blue keycard. This is another part of the run that requires a ton of luck in order to survive. He opens the door, and again uses the enemy's crossfire to spark internal battles. It's important to point out that this particular door cannot be closed once opened, so he needs to be especially careful here. If the imps are in the correct position, they can tank some of the hitscan shots from the shotgunners, but if a direct line forms between us and a shotgun blast, it could be all over in a fraction of a second. Eventually, a single imp remains, which is herded into the other room. After some maneuvering, the two imps are lured into the far corner, and Zero Master takes this opportunity to head into the blue keycard room. Another attribute of the door that connects these two rooms is that it cannot be opened by monsters, so enemies trapped on the other side can be forgotten about for now. Again, he camps in the corner beneath one of the holes. He doesn't know how many monsters above are left alive, so standing here for a time helps to ensure that the number is reduced as much as possible. While enemies can't shoot him when he is tucked away in the corner, when he moves around in the rooms he becomes a hittable target. So if there are multiple monsters walking around above, it's almost inevitable that he'll take a shot at some point. Keeping that number at one makes things a lot more manageable. Between him and the blue keycard lies two imps, a shotgunner, and a pink demon. Eventually, he'll have no choice but to face off against them. When the time does come, he inches his way slowly around the corner, alerting the pinky first. This is important because he needs the pinky to be out in front, tanking the damage from the shotgunner. And you can see he is doing his best to keep the pinky between him and the shotgunner at all times. The pink demon eventually becomes tired of being a shield and turns around to take out the shotgunner. It then succumbs from the continuous fireball impacts from the imps. Two mobs remain, and some precise movement eventually causes one of them to be destroyed by an exploding barrel. While clearing the blue keycard room, Zero Master has taken more damage, being left with only 13% health. One more hit from either a fireball or shotgun blast will likely result in death. During all of the commotion, the remaining imp has taken damage from the shotgunner above and is now trying to kill it from below. This seems to be a good opportunity to lower the monster count further, and he begins trying to move the imp into a position where it can fight with the enemy above. It takes a fair bit of persuasion, but eventually, the job gets done. In these lower rooms, three imps remain alive, and it's time to herd them into the blue keycard room for safekeeping. The pathfinding of these monsters is really unpredictable, and it's exhaustingly difficult to try and get them to move into the correct position. Remember, a single impact from a fireball will likely result in death, so Shadow Zero has to remain conscious of the location of every imp at all times and think extremely quickly when fireballs are thrown. Once trapped, it's time to start preparing for the final dash to the end. 
Between him and the exit lie three zombie men and five shotgunners. Thankfully, there is a relatively simple strategy to lure them into the room above the hole so they can be killed through infighting. One of the quirks of the stairs outside of the blue keycard door is that the enemies cannot walk down them, so once alerted you can easily move them into the room we need. Zero Master lures them one or two at a time until eventually they are whittled down. By the end, one shotgunner remains in the exit room, but with enough speed we can get to the switch before he takes a shot. With level 2 completed, only one level remains unbeaten on Pacifist. Level 30, Icon of Sin. The problem players face here is that the Icon is situated in a room that is completely cut off and normally inaccessible. The only way to defeat the Icon is to fire a rocket into its exposed brain several times. Given that this is disallowed by pacifist rules, this type of strategy can't be used. The area that we need to shoot through is too small to fit through, as well as being too high to reach, and there is no other way inside. In 2012, the speedrunner Looper devised an outlandish theoretical strategy that would allow you to beat the level without firing any weapons. In 2018, Zero Master was able to create a tool-assisted demonstration of the strategy in action. The tool he used allowed him to manually craft each frame individually so that every input is perfect. The strategy involves waiting for a sufficient number of arch files to be spawned by the boss. The way everything comes together happens pretty fast, so I'll just play the end of the run and then I'll explain what happened after. As I mentioned before, the exposed brain is both too small to fit through and too far away to make the distance. But as it turns out, getting injured and killed by the arch vials solves both of these problems. If you're unfamiliar with the way arch vials work, they have the ability to immolate Doomguy by summoning fire. In the case of this tool-assisted run, he jumped off the pillar towards the hole and lined it up so that he was repeatedly immolated by the arch vials, and this allowed him to keep his height in mid-air. He was then killed, which reduces Doomguy's size and the momentum carried him through the hole where he can now fit. Once inside the Icon, the Arch Vials continued to summon fire which indirectly damaged the Icon, eventually killing it. Realistically, this strategy is completely impossible to actually pull off in a real attempt, but it's pretty cool to see what's possible in theory. Maybe one day a better method will be discovered. Until then, the Icon of Sin remains the last level to be unbeaten as a pacifist. Thank you so much for watching you legends, I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.